The AGM-84 is an over-the-horizon precision-guided cruise missile sustained by an internal jet engine. It has three different variants, with the first being the D-model or Harpoon. This is an anti-ship cruise missile with an active radar seeker that locks onto and attacks surface level ships. The missile skims the surface of the water at 60 feet to increase survivability and effectiveness. On impact with the ship, it detonates its 500 pound warhead. The E-model, or standoff land attack missile, incorporates the optical guidance system of an AGM-62 Walleye, a data link module from the AGM-65 Maverick and a GPS receiver. These additions allow the cruise missile to be actively redesignated onto a different target when it enters its terminal phase. This enables man in the loop or MITL operations. It uses an improved Tomahawk warhead for better target penetration and an increased warhead size to 1,000 pounds. The H variant is the SLAM-ER for expanded response. This upgrade added small wings that deploy after launch, providing the missile with aerodynamic lift. This increases the range of the SLAM to over 150 nautical miles. Additionally, the warhead was upgraded from the E's Tomahawk warhead to include a titanium impactor for increased penetration against hardened targets. Using the AGM-84D Harpoon against ships can be done in one of two modes, bearing only launch or BOL and range slash bearing launch or R slash BL. When in bearing only launch mode, the missile will fly a set heading after launch before activating its terminal attack radar to target a ship within its seeker line of sight. This is less reliable than range bearing launch mode as the missile will lock onto the first ship it sees when it goes active. This can result in the wrong ship being targeted if the missile is launched into a cluttered environment. As such, precautions should be made to ensure target deconfliction to reduce the chance of fratricide or blue on blue. Range bearing launch mode uses the air to ground radar in C mode to lock onto a target ship. This provides accurate range and bearing cues before releasing the weapon. It will then go active immediately after launch and be locked onto the desired target. The downside of this mode is increased visibility to shipborne radar warning receivers, alerting the targeted ship of the launching aircraft and missile position. This may necessitate the use of active radar jamming or spoofing to increase survivability of both the missile and the launching aircraft. We will now take a look at how the Harpoon can be used in BOL or bearing only launch mode. First select master arm to arm and then select air to ground master mode. Select HPD from the stores page. HPD corresponds to the Harpoon D variant that is used on the Hornet. Selecting this will start a 25 second timer during which the harpoon cannot be used. The mode option allows selection of either the BOL or R slash BL attack modes. We will select BOL for this demonstration. Flight allows a selection of the missile approach altitude. High is 35,000 feet, medium 15,000 feet and low is 5,000 feet. The missile will not fly any higher than the current aircraft altitude. This ensures that the missile does not loft after launch and collide with the launching aircraft. We'll select medium for this demonstration. Term or terminal allows selection of one of the two terminal attack phases. Pop initiates a pop-up attack when the missile is approximately 5 nautical miles away from the target, where the missile will pitch up to around 500 feet before pitching down and colliding with the top surface of the vessel. Skim will program the missile to skim the surface of the water at around 50 to 60 feet before aiming for the waterline of the targeted vessel to impart the most damage. We'll select Skim for this demonstration. HPTP or Harpoon Turnpoint will designate the currently selected waypoint as a turnpoint that the missile will fly to before turning onto its approach bearing. FXP or Fix Point will designate a point halfway between the search and destroy ranges and ground stabilise the bearing line onto that point. This will allow multiple missiles to be launched onto the same approximate area. STEP allows the selected pylon to be stepped between all currently loaded weapons. Selecting UFC will allow the input of the search range, self-destruct range and the approach bearing. The search range inputs the distance the missile will fly before activating its seeker. The destruct range is the distance the missile will fly without a lock before detonating the warhead to safely destroy the missile. Bearing allows the input of the final approach bearing that the missile will fly along. 
Our first target is a cargo vessel that is loaded with stolen nuclear missile components. It has been determined to be a threat to national security and it has been ordered to be destroyed. ISTAR assets have observed that the vessel is travelling at 13 knots, bearing 110 degrees. Our mission is to employ one harpoon onto the target and observe desired weapons effect. The last known position of the ship has been programmed as waypoint zero in this aircraft. For this mission, as we only know the bearing, we can select bearing only launch mode. We can select flight to medium and input the terminal phase as skim. We can select UFC and input the bearing of the ship as 110 degrees. The search range we can select zero nautical miles and the destroy range we can leave at 60. Going back down we can select waypoint zero as our initial point by selecting HPTP or harpoon turn point. This means that the missile will fly to this initial point before going on to its final attack bearing. Looking to the front when target slash harpoon turn point appears we can select weapon release. This will fire the weapon and we can call Bruiser away 110. The harpoon will fly to waypoint zero and turn right onto the final approach heading of 110 degrees. Once the target ship has been locked by the radar, it will dive to enter the sea skimming mode. When close to the target, it will dive again to hit the ship near the waterline. It may become apparent that the ship is visible to the air to ground radar on approach to the target area. By using sensor control switch right, the TDC can then be assigned to the air to ground radar page. The sea mode can then be selected and the radar will attempt to pick up any moving targets on the water surface. When the target is visible, the TDC can be slewed over the target and sensor control switch right will designate it as a target point. This is demonstrated by track at the bottom of the screen and the speed and bearing of the target indicated here. The target is also displayed on the head-up display as a small box with target and the range to target here. R slash BL can then be selected as the active mode for the harpoon selected. This will display a new option on the program called SEEK. SEEK allows the pilot to input the size of the target that the seeker should be looking for. Small indicates a very small target such as a speedboat. Medium indicates a target such as a fishing boat or a private yacht. And large indicates a cruise ship or cargo ship size target. For this option we're going to select large for the cargo ship. Once in range is displayed and radar indicates that the radar is locked onto the target, we can press weapon release to fire the missile. Bruiser away 107. The missile will then immediately pitch down and enter its sea skimming terminal mode. This concludes the first part of the tutorial in using the AGM 84D harpoon. Let's now take a look at how to use the SLAM and the SLAM ER variants. The SLAM and SLAM ER are set up in exactly the same way, with the ER variant having access to a few more features. For this reason, we'll take a look at the SLAM ER for the demonstration. Select Master Arm to Arm, select Air to Ground Master Mode, and select Slammer on the Stores page. The missile will then begin an alignment procedure where the missile's internal navigation system will align with the aircraft's navigation system. This is displayed as a counter counting down from 10 minutes. The align quality is displayed here and once the timer reaches 7 minutes 30 it will be fully aligned and good alignment will be displayed. The mode option switches between pre-planned and target of opportunity modes. Flight will cycle the missile's cruise altitude between low, medium and high. These correspond to the same altitudes as the harpoon at 5000 feet, 15000 feet and 35000 feet respectively. E-Fuse cycles the electronic fuse from instantaneous to off. This must be set to instantaneous to activate the warhead. The weapon will not detonate otherwise. Erase SLAM will remove all data from all currently loaded SLAMs. Selecting this option brings up a confirmation to either cancel or accept. Once accepted, five seconds will pass before all the data is wiped from the missiles. WEP is an option specific to the AN-AWW-13 data link pod and will enable selection of the desired weapon type. DL-13 must be selected before selecting this option. Once it's selected, 
the four missile stations will be displayed on the left hand side. Selecting one of these will enter the data link into the SLAM ER mode. STP or steer point is specific to the SLAM ER and allows input of up to five steer points that the missile will fly to before attacking the target. This allows the missile to be flown through valleys or through a set course before becoming active. This option is inactive on the SLAM. Selecting this will open the steer point menu on the UFC. Selecting steer point 1 allows you to enter one of the waypoints as a steer point. Alternatively, positions can be inputted in latitude and longitude. SLAM display will open the data entry for the target coordinates. STEP will step through all the stations that contain the selected weapon. We will now take a look at the SLAM or SLAM ER display page. Mode remains the same, switching between target of opportunity and pre-planned modes. MSN or Mission opens the mission page where target coordinates can either be manually inputted or populated from designating a target point. The release type can be changed from manual to auto loft or flight director. Flight director is currently not implemented in DCS. HSI declutter is currently not implemented in this version of DCS World. STEP also works exactly the same as before. Selecting UFC allows the pilot to input the distance from the target that the seeker will become active. This is displayed on the stores page at the bottom here. When in pre-planned mode, the target coordinates must be inputted manually. Up to six pre-planned mission targets can be inputted at the top and the right hand side here. Selecting target UFC allows the position to be inputted in latitude and longitude coordinates. When inputting latitude coordinates, north or south must first be selected before inputting the desired coordinates. Pressing enter will input the currently selected coordinates into the target database. The two decimal places can then also be inputted for the decimal seconds. This will then populate the target data on the left hand side. Longitude coordinates are then inputted and the target point has been created. The elevation is then also inputted in either feet or meters. The terminal phase is specific to GPS guided bombs and does not affect the SLAM or SLAM-ER. Selecting TOO or target of opportunity allows the pilot to designate a waypoint as a target or use the targeting pod to designate a target. This is much faster than inputting the coordinates manually. To do this, select mode to TOO and then select the desired waypoint. Select waypoint designate and the coordinates will automatically be inputted on the left hand screen here. The HSI then displays additional symbology. The larger ring is the maximum range queue beyond which the aircraft will not be able to launch the missile onto the target. A smaller minimum range queue is also visible as well as the target point and a bearing line. When employing both the SLAM and SLAM-ER the plane must be flown to within 90 degrees off the target. This will ensure that the missile has sufficient energy to manoeuvre onto the target area. Once pointing at the target, select weapon release Long rifle away. Once launched, a countdown will display with TTS or time tool sensor. Once this reaches zero, the seeker will become active and a live feed will be displayed. Once the timer hits zero, the seeker will activate and the live feed will be displayed. The SLAM is shown on the left and the SLAM ER on the right. Use the brightness and contrast knobs to make target spotting easier. The symbology is much the same between the two missile variants. The large crosshairs are clearly visible, with an indicator to show where the missile is pointing. A ant can be selected to select the aft antenna on the data link module. This improves reception when flying away from the target. The crosshair polarity can be changed using track on the SLAM ER data link page. Selecting FOV will toggle between the narrow and wide FOV options. UFC can change the data link channel to the pylon number of the desired weapon. The SLAM can be redesignated by holding TDC depress and then slowing the TDC cursor left and right. 
on the slam dash ER, the cursor is moved over a target and TDC to press will redesignate the missile onto the new target. This enables successful man in the loop operations for both missile variants. The SLAM and SLAM ER are very capable missile systems when used correctly. With the ability to carry up to 4 on one F-18, you can destroy an entire SA-11 SAM site in one pass. Thank you very much for watching, this was a long video to make, so thank you for sticking all the way through to the end. Good luck using the Harpoon and SLAMs, and if you have any issues using them, leave a comment below and I'll try and answer it for you. Thanks very much for watching.